Honorable Chair, my co-panelist, friends. Uh, while opening, uh, Usaji gave us a line, media shamed us. And uh, that is a perennial complaint that we hear and we teach up to hear. Uh, as a media person, I have, uh, uh, I'm uh, in many platforms. I have said that you know, okay, we we are the people who are uh, no more working as a democratic institutions. Rather, we are basically an institution of patriarchy. We are basically an institution uh, who are working uh, to support authoritarianism. And uh, we are basically becoming uh, one of the most capable institutions uh, to create a society which sustains uh, with greater height of exploitation. So that's the role of media for me. So in such a circumstance, in such a background, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of utterance you expect from me? I'm not going to speak that, you know, whether inclusion is there or not. It's visible. There are hundreds of reports. There are so many uh, uh, reports, uh, documents, which say that it's visible. Where are the tribals? Where are the Adivasis? Where are the women? And I was just looking at uh, a report uh, published by UN women group and uh, New Zealand re, where it is said that, you know, hardly, barely 20% uh, women journalists are working in almost all the, all kind of media, digital, television, print. And pre in print, it's very, uh, it's becoming day to day, it's very uh, difficult to find women journalists. I don't know what is happening to that, whether the writing skill of women has gone down or the, the intention of inclusion has completely eroded. That's a bigger question to, to be answered. And number one, the question of inclusion will come when there is democracy. Is there democracy? Do we have a democratic norm still prevailed in our media institutions? Look at the media reports. What is happening? You just compare, you look at New York Times in one side and Times of India another side. Until now, New York Times gives at least 1,000 words to a story. But in Indian journalism, we have taken it granted that no one is going to read a 200 word story. So cut the words short. Don't go for evidence, just go for bites. Don't make an issue or don't discuss on an issue, rather create an issue and sensationalize it more and more. And particularly if it is a issue of violence and if it is a particular issue of, of violence against women then make it a story of entertainment. Remember when Nirbhaya case happened, media played a vital role and at that time at least you know two three major things happened. Parma Commission came, and a particular law came, the conscience of the nation was woke up. People came out in December winter, in December frozen night with candle lights and they face water cannons. After that, you see how many incidents 
of that same nature has happened. After Nirbhaya, every violence case, every rape case has been polarized. A victim is known to be discussed for her caste, for her religion, for her identity. The biggest problem is that, you know, after that nothing has happened in this country and the Prime Minister goes and speaking that, you know, people are scared of. After we brought a law, the rape cases has gone down. But what's the reality? Every day, if it is, you have seen Hathras, you have seen uh, Unav. Every other day there is an event, but what do we do? How do we report that? That's the biggest uh, problem nowadays. Something, a, a case comes, we start making who, what caste she is, what is her religion, what is her identity, and what is the caste of the victim. A Brahmin cannot be a rapist. A upper caste people cannot be a rapist. And we go with that mindset. And why it is happening? Again, I, I focus on one point. Because there is lack of democracy in your understanding, in your institutional framework. Media is completely working as PR agency of authoritarian rulers. I am not targeting any political party. Whoever is there in the power, they want to use media as their PR agencies. And politics of this country has forgotten the idea of democracy and the idea of equality since long. When did you listen a politician talking about the idea of equality? When did you hear a politician is talking about a gender sensitive society, a society of inclusion? So divisive, the division has become the norms. So media is not a, media is not a uh, completely different organ. It's a part of our society. When your society is poisonous, you are going to be a poisonous house of media. Remember, in 1936, I think, 36 or 37, I'm not sure, Gandhi wrote an uh, editorial and uh, the title was Poisonous Journalism. And what Gandhi wrote in 30s, it's happening today, the same, nothing has changed. Meena was talking about the Dalit uh, editorial policy, whether a uh, no Dalit has come to become a, an editor. Do you know in Odisha, every fourth Odia is at Adivasi. Because you have 23% of tribal population in Odisha. And we don't have a single visible reporter, nor in television, neither in print. Not a single tribal reporter. Fakir can speak very well on that. He was a part of uh, media groups here. Even the tribal populated districts like Malkangiri, Koraput, you don't have a district's correspondent from that community. You use, okay, I, I, I got a report where it is said that, you know, nearly 50% women journalists are working in television media. That's fine, fine, great. But what role? They are assigned to. You are making women journalists a piece of glamour. They are the news presenters. And in that same report it is said that after 35, the reporter, uh, the anchor, he no more becomes an anchor. At least you can see many colored women Many colored anchors still sitting and dominating the newsrooms in the Western world. But how many senior 
women journalists are still sitting and dominating the newsrooms in Indian media. You need pretty faces and stop making women a simple pretty face. That is the biggest conspiracy against feminism in India. That reducing the presence of women as a pretty face only. Last thing I think, uh, if I will, I will go on speaking and speaking. I just want to make few very uh, particular points. One is if you want to make an inclusive media house, first emphasize on the democratic management of the media houses. Domination of corporate interest and domination of political interest in media is going to make you an authoritarian state. Our democracy is going to die if we allow our media institutions to be run by agenda-driven groups. Number two, the idea of equality will die in this country if you don't make the media houses inclusive. You have to bring more tribal, more Dalit, more women journalists who can take decisions. And number three, the protection of privacy. India has become a land of infringement. It's a land of interception. Anybody can enter into telephone, record your telephone and make it public at his own will. Remember how our media celebrated, how our media celebrated the chart, the WhatsApp chats of Deepika Padukone and others. Usaji must have remembered one telephone taping case brought down Ramakrishna Hegede government in Karnataka. Now every day, every day anyone can intercept your telephone and make your telephone calls public. And it is happening at the time when Supreme Court of India is saying and reiterating in that very great judgment, the great privacy judgment, where privacy is a fundamental rights. Privacy is a fundamental rights, but we can infringe into privacy of anyone. And if she is a woman, it's doubled. We just go on. And again, another case in the same level, if you remember, in Odisha, in last five, uh, in two, yes ma'am, I, I am very much aware of my time. Suppose somebody commits suicide. Now media is very keen to report on two things. One is, of course, women atrocities, and particularly the rape cases. And the other one is, if it is suicide case. After a suicide happens, if it is a male member, then immediately the women partner of that man becomes the biggest villain. It starts with uh, your uh, Susan Singh Rathput case that Riya that becomes Diane and she is no, the, all kind of reports. In Odisha, if you have gone through last two, three suicidal case, suicide case, the women partner of the man is the biggest villain. When do we, we stop that? When do, we, do we, when we are going to stop the attitude of being uh, judge, jury, executioner, everything? And the final words I want to say that we are journalists, we are not judges. We are passing verdict at every time. Hang him. He is the culprit. He is the guilty. I always 
say one thing if you want to be a journalist stop becoming a judge first you have nothing to be judgmental about what is happening you are a mere reporter report it don't pass your judgment as reporting to my mind thank you very much